<laughs> Morning, Peter. Well, I, I should take this opportunity to say, yes, I, I did tell you. <laughs> and uh, he, here we are. It's, you, you remember those cartoons we used to have in the papers when the railways were shocked at snow in January? Yes. Uh, here we have a whole electorate shocked by a, a Labour Party raising taxes. And what did you think was going to happen? Uh, it, 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 there's, there's no surprise about this. It seems to me to be in itself, on its own terms, quite an incompetent budget. Yeah. I think they've, 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 they've asked for endless trouble by this ridiculous and cruel uh, inheritance tax on farms. That, yeah, the farm thing, and also on families as well. Also on it, families. It just can't, it, it, it just, it hurts a, a group of people uh, who, on whom we depend. And it can't, it, it just does seem as if they didn't even look to see what effect it would have, that all the figures that they use seem to bear no relation to, to the reality actually out in the agricultural areas of the country. Mm -hmm. I, that is going to cause them endless trouble, uh, far more than the, the famous pasty tax row, mm -hmm. particularly as, as um, Peter rightly pointed out, because of Jeremy Clarkson's uh, new adherence to the, yes. the farming lobby. If you've got him against you, then you are in, in, in trouble, especially if he's right and you're wrong. So that's that's a sign of incompetence. All the other, the the, the long flagged act of spite against against those parents who save desperately to try and get their children into private schools. That's going ahead. Mm -hmm. The but the tax on employment for a Labour government, which in once upon a time would have been the the the, the government of the working class, a tax which will actually put pressure on employers to fire people mm -hmm. uh, and to uh, uh, to uh, to make uh, make more unemployed people is an unbelievable thing for a supposedly left wing government. And it, it does demonstrate that what Labour has actually become is not party of the working class at all, uh, but a huge lobby for public sector employees. Yeah. So that money will be shovelled from everywhere into the public sector to keep public employees uh, well paid and, and, and securely paid and to, to finance their enormous pension schemes. Yeah. And everybody else will suffer. This is not a Labour government in the traditional style which, which, which had, had the merit of being able to say to the Tories and to the rest of the country, look, we stand for, for working people. This is a public sector <coughs> lobby in full cry. Mm. And I think people are going to come gradually to realise this. But how on earth anybody could be surprised by it is, is, is again, what... Uh, I think, I suppose, I mean, if anything, people are surprised. I was slightly surprised at the kind of glee with which they unfolded it all uh, and the sort of smugness with which they all patted each other on the back and congratulated each other as if they were the new group in charge at school, you know, who'd sort of taken over from the clever people and these were the uh, the geeks who had sort of come in and gone well now we're going to punish everyone because it feels like that yes i know but that, that's this is what happens when people come in into office they, they it's a huge great wave of endorphins or whatever is mm. floods through their bodies here they are because it's an extraordinary thing the democratic system actually gives real hard power uh, over a quite a small group of people to tell everybody what to do and to also the direction of the country. And this is extraordinary, mm. drug-like uh, pleasure for those who seek it. And they're still going through that bit. But what you have to remember is that the people who haven't got it or who've had it taken away from them or, or, who, or who are threatened by this kind of power feel very differently. But mm. there isn't very much anybody can do about it uh, with the opposition which we have. And people kept saying yesterday that Rishi Sunak g gave a good response to it. Well, was it really? And there's, no, there's been no fundamental... Well, it doesn't make any difference, does it? ...divergence between the parties for years. Right. We've ended up in this position precisely because people have run out of reasons uh, to, to, to vote for the Conservative Party. They can't think of any reason why. That's, I gave them one very good reason at the last election, which was that the Labour Party would be worse. Yeah. That's about it. Right. And the worrying thing for me as well that happened yesterday, uh, not to do with the budget whatsoever, but to do with Lindsay Hoyle and his statement on Southport. Just have a look at this for a moment. I wish to remind the House that the following horrendous, terrible incident in Southport on the 29th of July, a suspect is awaiting trial, have been charged with multiple offences. That means the House of Judice resolution is engaged and references should not be made to the case. I know that all the rule members wish to see justice done in this case. It is therefore of paramount importance that nothing is said in this House which could potentially prejudice a proper trial or lead to it being abandoned. 
Now, I thought that was an extraordinary intervention from him because you and I, Peter, have been working all our lives and dealing with contempt of court rules and dealing with, um, you know, sub judice and making sure that, you know, trials are not in any way interfered with by the likes of us talking about them or by the likes of MPs talking about them. But, you know, clearly there's a subtext here because the subtext is not about the suspect. It's not about the circumstances of his arrest. It's not about the circumstances of the, of the actual event itself, the, the, the atrocity. It's about what the government knew and whether they withheld information from the public and in my view that's not something that the Speaker of the House should be telling people not to talk about. Oh I disagree with you completely. Uh, I am an absolutely uh, ferocious supporter of the sub judice rule. So am I. It has to be but it, 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 it applies very much in this case. Uh, I, we, we could only really conceivably discuss this issue in code uh, because, because of that reason even then we'd be constrained so I'm in, in great difficulty. Uh, but I would very gladly agree after this case is, is, is over and it has come to trial and the trial has, has reached its verdict uh, to discuss with you at length why I disagree with you. Right. I, I, I think that it is that, that there are uh, there are very good reasons why we have this rule and I think that ex it's exactly when it seems most irksome. Uh, that we have to try hardest to enforce yeah, but here's it what, our, here's what my, ourselves. But here's what my problem is, and it's not to do with the, this particular case, it's to do with an ever-growing, it seems to me, and a sort of mission creep from politicians who wish to put something to the side and not talk about it under the auspices of a police investigation or under the auspices of a court case. They tried to do it in Scotland when the SNP were being investigated by the police, which they still are. Uh, any SNP uh, person or any anybody in Scottish politics who was asked a question about what was going on, they said, oh, well, we can't do anything because there's a police investigation. And I, well, think, I think there's a problem. problem. There is a problem here because... You know as well as I do that it's pretty clear what invest what what it's, uh, is, is likely to affect a, a trial and what is not, and not everything about everything affects a trial. Oh, good lord! I disagree with you again. There, I, we have at, at, um, at, at my newspaper we have uh, sessions in which we discuss the immense complexities of uh, of, of these laws and others. And of the, course, but it doesn't stop you writing it's, stories it's, about it's, them. It's it? surprisingly complex. Uh, the, the, the danger which faces us. I think one reason why it seems more irksome, and this is something I would, I do feel could be fixed, is the immense time it seems now to take uh, police and prosecutors to prepare cases. Uh, it, it would seem to me that, uh, that, that in, uh, it should, cases should come to court within weeks, not within years right. of, uh, of, of arrests. And I think the slowness of the procedure, but that's again partly because, uh, because the, Parliament and governments over the past 20 or 30 years have made laws about the way in which trials must be conducted, which are, which are very constraining, which I, which I oppose and I've written about. Yeah, but in the, in the Mail today, right, in the Mail today, page 23, headline, what yep. did Sarma know about Southport terror charges? Tory rivals ask. So you do write about these things. You haven't... Well, they, that, you, haven't... They, they, you, you, can, you, can, you can report that people are asking, but that's about it. I mean, that, that's... Yes, the, but what the, I'm saying is, 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 is that Lindsay is, Hoyle... Is, 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 yeah, but the what thing I'm is saying, discussable. Yeah, but what I, I'm saying I, is that Lindsay Hoyle is saying you can't say that in Parliament, so those questions can't be asked. Why? Well, what's wrong with the questions being asked? We've come under the influence in many ways in this country of American practice. The Americans simply don't have this sub judice rule, and an awful lot of people on the on the. And I think that's place. better, actually. What the, you think the American system is better? Yes. Well, you see, I don't. I because think the because system... the thing is that you you are allowed as a member of the public to know everything. And the well, jury you, you, are interviewed after every case, and the jury are allowed to write books about it. You well, know. The, here's, here's the problem. I, I believe very strongly in the presumption of innocence, and I believe also very strongly in, 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 in proper uh, independent juries, which are allowed to make their own minds so up. So do I. I. If you've had, and increasingly, actually, uh, uh, th this rule is, def is not so much defied as undermined in different ways, uh, increasingly, it's, it is the case that there's an awful lot more speculation before trials than there used to be, and an awful lot more uh, suggestion of the direction in which people might go. It seems to me, I, and that's that's been wrong. There was a period uh, which ended after that awful case of the of the wrongly accused teacher in Bristol, uh, where newspapers, it seemed to me, had gone far too far in the in the American direction, and I think that's been corrected. But it's the, your, the disagreement between you and me is, is quite clear that you think the American system is better and I think the, the English system is better. Yeah. And that, that, I'm that's just generally... Just I, I just do, but I think you... I, 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 for that very reason, although it, it doesn't actually suit my trade, 
uh, to have these constraints on us at all. It's a great nuisance to, to, to newspapers and other media to have these reporting restrictions and to have the, 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 the subjudice rule, it, precisely because it's such a nuisance to us. I think we have to accept as, as uh, responsible citizens of our country, that it's vital that people get fair trials. If people get if people's trials are unfair, but the consequences are appalling. No, of course, and, 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 and we agree on that. But we agree on that, Peter. But that's it not the issue. Years to get someone out of, out of prison who's been put yeah, there wrongly. No. In the first yeah, place. but that's not the issue. The issue is not about it is whether the issue no, it's me. not. Well, it may be for you, but I think you're being a bit obtuse, actually, because at the end of the day. Well, okay, we're I, dealing... I, 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 you, 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 you can say that if you like. I just think. Well, I'd quite like to say something else, actually, if you don't like. I can explain why. No, I don't want you to explain why, because I want to have my say as well. Oh, so, right, OK. So, so you know how it used to work. So the thing is that, you know, in, in these cases where politics gets involved as well, it's, I'm not interested in, in, in the case itself. I'm interested in what's happened well, since... Well, yeah, but in terms of what you're not allowed to talk about, I think yeah. it's a very dangerous precedent to set in Parliament where the Speaker of the House is effectively putting a gagging order on publicly elected MPs who are there to represent constituents who deserve answers from politicians who are supposedly doing their jobs and, and being held to account. And this is, it seems to me, an excuse to not be held to account. I think, he, I think he's, he's quite right because the seriousness of it if it goes wrong is huge. As he pointed out, if this goes wrong, the whole trial could, could collapse. And who would that? Who would that? Suit? No, I get that as well. But but what would be wrong with somebody being allowed to ask a question if it was out of order? Then the speaker could rule it so. And if Keir Starmer, the prime minister, didn't wish to answer it, he could say so. But to actually well, I, say I, to people, you're not even allowed to ask the question, seems to me to be yeah. wrong. You can get a lot out in the House of Commons for the Speaker to stop you if you want to, yeah. and then it's and then it, and then it is out, and and the whatever effects it may or may not have on the case will then take place. I think again, I said it's, it's reasonable to, to to forewarn. He doesn't want to be responsible if it goes wrong. He will now be able to say if anybody does trip over the traces and and, 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 the, and, and, there, and there are consequences, he will now be able to say and quite rightly, look, I warned us as, as firmly and as clearly as I could about this. Uh, there's a limit to what I can do. He can't. He can't have the the, the Commons Chamber patrolled by by men in clubs uh, hitting people who, who ask the wrong questions. Well, he can only say, you "Don't never do know. this." You and never he's know. Done it. I mean, that but, might be the look, next. Yeah, stage. yeah, I know, I know. But uh, you, you, I, I honestly do not think we've got that far yet. No, but it's a, it's a slippery slope. Anyway, Peter enjoyed that. Thank you very much indeed. Peter Hitchens, uh, their columnist at the Mail on Sunday, uh, with his completely different take on uh, what's going on in the House of Commons. I, I think he's wrong. I just think it's a very, very dangerous precedent to set for the, for the Speaker of the House to tell people in the House of Commons, duly elected by their constituents who might wish to have, have questions asked on their behalf, that they can't ask questions about something uh, because it might affect a trial, which is sometime in the future.